All righty. Awesome. What a great, great crowd. So glad you, so glad you are here today. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Um, I had something happen this, this a few weeks ago. I, uh, I went back to my old, my homestead, my old homestead, the place where, where I was raised, the place where I grew up, and I was driving by, and I kind of felt nostalgic. So, so I pulled in uh, to driveway, walk up, knock on the door, and, and I asked the people, I said, would it be okay if I just kind of came in and kind of looked around, and, and the people said no, and they slammed the door in my face. Yeah, and I was like, I knew my parents always liked my brothers more than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it. Here we go. Women on Mission. We have a women's missionary um, group that meets every, sing or every third Monday. That's tomorrow. So if you're interested in being a part of our women's missions group, uh, you can be here at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. They meet right out here outside this door. It's a women's missions ministry. And so please jump in there. If you want to know what's going on, just show up, right? 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Be a part of that. Uh, we have a wedding shower uh, this afternoon. We've had a lot of showers lately. They've been uh, soaking my yard. But today, wedding shower, 3.30. And it is for Kenyon Tollison. You know, Kenyon grew up here in our church, and Maggie Dooley. So they're right up here in the front. Very cute little couple of you guys. So yeah, this so 3.30 today, and they're registered at Target and Amazon. So you got time to run out, be back here at 3.30, support that uh, wedding shower this afternoon. Senior adults, uh, if you want to come, if you, you can pretend you're a senior adult, it doesn't matter to me, but if you want to come this Friday at 11 a.m., we're going to have a hymn sing. It's, we'll meet in here. It's a lot of fun. Sing some hymns. Uh, then we'll, if you'll bring some potluck stuff, luncheon type stuff, we'll move from here into the fellowship hall and, and we'll be able to eat together. So that is this Friday, 11 a.m. And we also have uh, our Vacation Bible School, not very far away. Vacation Bible School will be just about four weeks out, something like that, four or five weeks. And we're looking for helpers. So if you can help, you want to be a leader, please let Cindy Shaw know as soon as possible, we'll get with her. And we also need some food items. And so if you can help with some food items, uh, Judy Irby is going to be helping with that. She's over here, but Judy is going to be, yeah, she'll be out here in the uh, foyer. So when you walk out of here, you'll catch her. There's some different breads and different fruits and things like that that we can use some help with. So catch her, sign up, and we can get that taken care of right away. All righty. Well, thank you all for being here. What a great morning. So glad. Let's, let's go to the Lord in worship and prayer. And just ask God to really do the amazing work that he wants to do in our lives today. Father God, I know you are the one, only, true, real God. And God, right now, we come to you and we just pray, God, right now, let us open our hearts to you. God, let us allow you to speak to us, change us, make us new, God. Help us that we will allow the Holy Spirit to do what he desires in our life. And God, as we sing, let us worship you. Uh, God, let us just love you with all that's within us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Good morning. This is Case Tollison. Case has accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior, and he wants to follow in baptism. He knows it's not this water that saves him, but it's his relationship with Jesus Christ. He's asked his mom, Dana Tollison, to pray for him. So Dana, would you pray for your son? Dear Lord, I want to lift Case up to you in prayer. Thank you for blessing. Dale and I with this child, we are so thankful that he is not only our child, but yours. I pray that as he grows, his relationship with you will grow stronger. I pray for guidance and protection throughout his life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, the exciting thing is when family is involved. He had his mom pray for him, and his dad is going to baptize him. Our case, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, guys, are, we are to be the spiritual leaders of our home. And Dale's job doesn't end right there continues on and praise God for the job that he and Dana have done so far and as they continue to be the godly witnesses example for their kids let's pray 
Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, for, for giving us the grace, the strength that we need to do what you've called us to do. And now, Father, help us to, with all the excitement of Mother's Day and everything, help us to put those things aside and focus on you as we worship, as we lift up your name, as we praise you and give you the honor that is due you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you guys. There they go. Let's all stand. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I would let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more night, now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Now, you get, you get an opportunity here to let everybody in the neighborhood know what heaven sounds like. When we sing and we lift the praise to the Lord, this is what heaven sounds like, right? All right, here we go. We praise you. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him 
be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like, come on. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high With all creation cry God we praise You We'll see You break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall For fear cannot survive when we praise You The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high With all Good morning. Um, today is just such a wonderful day. A wonderful day. Let's pray. Dear God, just thank you so much for such a wonderful day. We've had the baptisms, getting ready to have the baby dedications, and having it be Mother's Day. God, just thank you for this, the men and women fighting for the freedoms that we have to come here to celebrate these, these events, these celebrations, God. And God, just thank you again for these men and women fighting for the freedoms that we can come and listen to God's word and learn more about your word. Again, God, thank you for the celebrations and thank you for our moms. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. If you have a baby, would you go ahead and bring them on up now? We're going to recognize them. Isn't this fun? Sarah and David, you made it. Oh my goodness. How old is Lily Claire? Four days old. Well, I'm following them. We're going to start with them. 
<laughs> you're fine, you're fine. This is David and Sarah Naylor, and this is little Lily Claire. She was born four days ago, so I don't think we have a picture of her, but, but uh, congratulations. Talk about a surprise seeing you here. Wow. Wow. Okay. My mind used to be sharp. And I know you all, but as soon as I start counting on that, that doesn't happen. All right. This is Emma. Emma Stevens got mom and dad and sister Olivia. This is Zach and Kaylin. This is Colin, Colin Elwinger, Elwanger. This is Justin and Katie. And he's got lots of people to play with because he's got his brothers Grayson, Hudson, and Weston. And Nolan. And Nolan. Nolan. And Nolan. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. You. Now, you've moved here from Washington. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Y'all need to give him a good Oklahoma welcome, okay? <laughs> This is Reed Wade Gathers, Garrett and Michaela, mom and dad, and he's a first. Yep. Thank you. Oh, this child's going <laughs> to suffer from attention, I can tell. <laughs> and this is Nikki and, hi Lucy, Lucy Anna Faye, and my granddaughter. Brad and Kinsey, and this is Theo Anthony, Theo Anthony Shelton. Oh, look at that bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> and this kid is going to suffer. <laughs> All right. And this is Nora, Nora Harper, Jacob, and Morgan. And Nora joins... Big brother Luke and, whoops. Mike, can you come and hold this baby, please? Can you hold this baby? You've done this before. Oh, yes. Yes, I thought we were going to get through the whole day without that. That would have been so disappointing. You're a good dad. You are a good dad. We are so excited for you all, and God intentionally gave you these children. This isn't an accident. Nikki, is she getting heavy? Okay. Well, we will. Do you need some help? Come here, Lucy. Come here, Lucy. All right. All right. Well, let's pray, and it'll be quick, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, don't poke yourself in the eye there, kiddo. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for these precious children. Thank you for life. And Lord, I ask you to, to be with these parents, be with their siblings, the, the baby siblings. And Lord, thank you for the joy these children are gonna bring. And Father, thank you for being there when they break our hearts. Father, give, give these parents the grace needed and help them, Father, as they raise these children to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Bobby, thank you. Thank you for these things. And Andrea Andrade, she made the blankets. Andrea, raise your hand so they know she's the one who made these blankets for you. Thank you. Wait. All right. You okay? That's where you stand, Gayla. Mark the spot for you. All right, y'all. Y'all met Theo Shelton. I, Blake, bring me Zeke. Bruce, Bruce, please turn off your mic before we start singing.
Now, they did, I just want to explain that they, 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 they've got their home church and they're going to do their thing at their home church. And so we support that, but they're here to, to do this. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> All right, we're working on it, buddy. And his earphones. Yeah, I'm just going to give him back to you. All right. Okay, I was, I was so going to sing to him. But uh, I don't think he, he just, I made him sick. Just. <laughs> so we'll not do that. It was a nice thought. I was going to create a memory that he'll never remember. So, that being said, imagine me and Zeke, or Theo for that matter. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still. The calm assurance This child can face uncertain days Because he lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow been cool if I could have held Zeke through that, or Theo, but that's all right. Did you tell him to do that? No, it's all right. Just okay. That's all right. You know, this, there, Satan is, is so ready to throw stuff, stuff at us. He is so ready to attack our children and our grandchildren. He is ready to make them his. So today, as parents, as moms, as dads, as, as granddads, as grandmas, as mother-in-laws, as father-in-laws, as aunts and uncles, we need to speak the name of Jesus over them and, and a- allow God to just protect them, and just, we just need to totally surrender to that. Your name is power, 
Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus 
God, we love you. And we don't stand in this room today just to sing lyrics and sing notes and push buttons and, and participate. And God, we, we do this because we want to experience you. We pray for our children. We speak your son's name, Jesus, over them and ask you, God, to protect them, to give us wisdom and discernment as we raise them, as we try to help them to discover who you are. That, that you become their Lord and Savior. And that, God, that they understand the true meaning of peace and hope and the power of the resurrection. We thank you, God, that you loved us so much you sent your one and only Son, something I could not do, I could never do. But you're God, and you loved me that much that you gave him and you sacrificed him to bear my sin on his cross. God, help us to show that kind of love to our children. And that God, to teach them that it did not end at Calvary, it did not end at the cross, but God, it ended, God, at the resurrection. And today you walk among us. So Lord, as we serve you faithfully, help us to take our worship into the next step, to hear from your word. God, to share your love, this love of your son Jesus. And that when we leave this place today, people will know without question that we are your children. God, we love you and we thank you for your free gift of grace and it's in your name that I pray. Amen. It started with a dream. Good things always do. Can you give baby kiss? In the garden, humanity was made. Man and woman. Crafted and created to be creative by the creator. From the divine dreams came humanity with the ability to create new life. Formed, full of wonder, full of possibilities, endless in terms of who they might become, our children. Born, soft skin, chubby cheeks, from their first cries to the first time we place their small hands in ours. This goodness grows. From middle of the night feedings to mid afternoon naps, whispering our dreams and prayers for them as we hold them close and rock them to sleep. Mommy loves you. We feel their baby breath as they <laughs> snuggle in close. Their hearts beat, our hearts burst. We get lost in the divine craftsmanship of the little life entrusted to us. Hand in hand, first standing, then taking first steps forward into a lifetime of formation. We take the lead while we can to make a way to provide wisdom, guidance, and protection. Through moments and milestones, these tiny miracles grow and develop day by day. Preschool drop-offs and grade school plays turn into sleepovers, summer camps, bike rides, and first drives. Birthdays, bonfires, big games, and graduation days transformed. The days go slowly, but the years seem to fly by. And what feels like a daydream, that baby you brought home in your arms is now an adult leaving home to face the world. Yet we ask, what's formed our children? Informed. What influences have shaped their reality and defined their worldview? Did the faith of our children drown in the waves of cultural debates and compromise? Were they swept up in a never-ending media tidal wave of influencers and trendsetters? Will they follow Jesus with faith that lasts? We pray to a God who cares, whose selfless love spared no cost to pursue us or our children, so that at the end of all things, we'll be brought home to our eternal home together. It starts with a dream. We dream, we pray with hope, with a promise that at the end of all things, we're brought to our eternal home with our children, celebrating, worshiping forever. Together.
And that question is, who's forming our children? And moms, that's why you are so important, and dads too. God created man and woman to have children, to raise them, to know him. And parents, your role is so important, so important. As, as Mike mentioned earlier, Satan, Satan's here to, to attack the family. He tries to split the family up. He tries to then indoctrinate the children with, with lies. And that's why it's so important, parents, your, your role. How many of you moms had breakfast in bed today? Richard, you are not a mom. All right, Jackson, did Jackson do that? Good, good. Well, there was another little girl who, on Mother's Day, she, she took her mom, her, she knew her mom liked hot tea. So she brought her mom a cup of hot tea and her mom said, well, this is so nice, honey. And she took a sip. Well, it's so good. I didn't know you knew how to do that. She said, yeah, mom, I watched you. I said, you boil the water, then you take the tea leaves and you put them in the strainer and, and then when it's good and ready, you, you drink it. And so I did that. But mom, I couldn't find the strainer. So I used the fly swatter. But don't worry, mom, I didn't use the new fly swatter. I used the old fly swatter. Don't know if the mother drank any more of the tea or not, but sometimes, sometimes not having breakfast in bed might be good. Thank you for being here today. God has given us a role as parents to teach our children about him. Today is a fun day, a wonderful day. For many, for some, it's a hard day. For some, it's a really difficult day. And before we begin, I... I want us just to go to the God who's helping those celebrate that it's a wonderful day and helping those get through today where today's a rough day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Father, today is a marvelous day. We saw a young man get baptized. We've We've seen children, babies, infants, Lord, and, and the joy that they bring. And Father, so today is a wonderful day for a lot of people. But Father, for some, today is a rough day, a really hard day. So Father, I, we pray for those that you celebrate with. But Father, we also pray for those that you come alongside and your grace and your mercy is sufficient. Because today is, we celebrate mothers, but today is really not about mothers, it's about you. We worship you, we celebrate you and praise you for our mothers. Help us to remember that, Lord. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, there's good news and there's bad news. Mother's Day, the bad news is that you look at our world today, People who claim to have no faith, those numbers are growing each. In the last 20 years, they have, it's almost flip-flopped from those who claim to have faith to those who don't. In 2015, the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage. There's a growing acceptance of, of the question of what gender we are. And pray for those. Pray for those who are struggling with that. They're, they're being deceived. They're, they're not the enemy. But pray for them. Pray for them. The mass shootings, the anger, the hatred that is out there in the world. Mental illness among the young is skyrocketing. The world is moving to a one world currency and a one world religion. It's moving that way quickly quickly. COVID-19 showed us a lot of that. We are in the last days. So are we to be afraid? No. Why? Because our God is greater than all of that. He is greater. There isn't anything we're going to come against. You know, sometimes I wonder about, you know, with my grandkids, what kind of world is my grandkids going to grow up in? You know what? 
They've got Jesus. As long as they speak Jesus, as long as they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you know what? He will have the grace. He'll have the, the strength. He'll have the, the mercy and the direction for them. And it's our job, folks, it's our job to teach them to reach out to Jesus and not to this person or that person and not even to us, but to Jesus because he is our strength. He's our strength. So mom, the bad news is the world we live in. But if we think this is bad, has it ever been this bad before? Well, I'll tell you what, God wiped all the humanity except for eight people off the face of the earth with a flood, didn't he? He must have thought it was pretty bad then. So yeah, yeah, it's been bad before. God's greater. Keep our eyes on him. That's the bad news. The good news is he is greater than anything. And moms, we need you. On the back of your bulletin are some scriptures. We're gonna move along pretty quickly uh, because I know you've got a lot of things, but but this is important. This is important. Moms, what do we need from you? First, we need you to pray. We need you to pray. Psalm 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. We pray. But pray to who? Pray to God. And sometimes you pray to Jesus, and sometimes you pray to the Holy Spirit. But pray to him. Reach out to him. He's our strength and our endurance. Second thing, we need you to be a good example. In Luke chapter 10, verses 41 and 42. Remember, Jesus has come to the home of Mary, Martha, and and Lazarus, and and Martha's in the kitchen. She's getting dinner ready, and Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Martha, the pots are banging together in the kitchen because Martha's mad. Mary's not helping her. She's left her to do all the work. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is best, and it will not be taken away from her. Mothers, in your 14 jobs that you have, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter, as whatever other roles you have, don't lose track of your relationship with God. Your relationship with God is what will get you through. There was a story, um, a young lady was talking about her mother. They lived in the Bronx of New York. So they didn't have much. She said, we lived there, us seven kids with our single mom. It was mid-January in the Bronx in New York. Huge snowstorm hit. We lived a half uh, a block from the highway and the highways were shut down from all the snow and there were several families stuck on the highway and it was coming nighttime. Moms told us kids, "Go go to the highway, invite those families to come to our home. Again, they didn't have much. But this um, gal said, we had 13 families come to our small home. Our living room was covered in sleeping bags, blankets, and pillows. In the morning, we had three pots of coffee, one huge pot of hot chocolate, bacon, eggs, and warm French bread. Everyone showed such gratitude. Mom's act of kindness and humanity was so profound to me. She showed us all the selflessness of helping others. Moms, be that example. Show us how to live. The third thing, your testimony goes hand in hand with being an example. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Tell your children who your faith is in. Tell them about Jesus. Sing those songs. So important. We had a lady, family came here. She and her husband are now with the Lord. Her name was Teresa Sanders. Many of you remember Teresa and Willard. Her family, she was a great cook. They had eight kids. Started with one boy, six girls, and ended with a boy. I don't know how many they they kept going if they kept having girls, but anyway. Teresa was, she was busy. She worked all the time. She was a great cook, and fried chicken was one of her best meals. You know what her kids said was her best, her favorite piece of the chicken and fried chicken? What would you think would be her favorite piece of fried chicken? It was the back. 
Why the back? Well, there's not any meat on it. So why would she want that piece? So that her kids could have the pieces that had more meat. They learned, that, they learned selflessness. They learned sacrifice from their mother. Be that example. Let your testimony be witness to your kids. Fourth thing, read your Bible. Read your Bible to your kids. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. If you take the word read, an, an acrostic, the first letter of uh, each, taking the, those four letters, R-E-A-D, read. First letter R, read. Read your Bible to kids. Second one, second letter E, engage. Engage your children. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, when you read a story, maybe your kids like to draw. Are they understanding what the story is about? Draw, draw out what we just read. Draw it out. Maybe they like to, they like to act. Act out the story we just did. Maybe they like to sing. Let's make a song up over what we just read. But get them involved in the, not just sitting there and listening and can't wait till this is over so I can go play, but engage them in it. Then A, apply. How does it apply to their life? Proverbs 15.1 says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. Teach them how to do that. Teach them, teach them how to apply the Bible to their life. And then D, discuss. Discuss it with them. Talk to them. Listen to what they have to say. The fifth thing is nature. Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. God tells us about him in the Bible. He shows us in a lot of ways, sometimes through other people, but he also shows him, himself in nature. We learn a lot. We see, in the fall, we see things go dormant, but then in the spring, they come back to life. There's a message right there. One time I remember taking our grandkids, we went on a walk. And I thought, okay, let's do that. So, guys, what do you see? What do you see that reminds you of God? Well, there was the grass and the sky and everything. But you know what caught their attention more than anything? We had the most discussion about? It was the dead squirrel in the middle of the, yard, in the, middle of the, the street. That brought more discussion. They gathered around it. They looked at it, poked it. Some of them poked it with their fingers, others with their foot. I got in a lot of trouble in that one. But, but they... They were fascinated. And they said, do you think he went to heaven? Did he go to heaven? The other one says, how do you know it's a he? And it just, there were just question after question. And, and it was a chance, okay, well, what about you? Will you go to heaven? Nature, go for walks. Take, teach the children. Look at that beautiful sunrise, the beautiful sunset. Six teachable moments. Teachable moments, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Moses is speaking to the people. They're, they've been slaves all their life, getting ready to live on, be free. It says, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Take time. What's a teachable moment? It's when something happens and you can, you can somebody does something good and you can see, do you see what they did? Do you think God's pleased with that? Somebody does something bad. Do you think God's happy with that? I remember one Sunday we were having the Lord's Supper and I saw a dad sitting with his two kids by him. And he kept talking to them. I'm a little slow. But I caught on, what he was doing was he was explaining the Lord's Supper to them. That's a teachable moment. That was so precious. I just really wanted to stop everything and say, perfect example, a perfect example. Teachable moments. Seven, encourage questions. Encourage them to ask questions. 
Even if it questions your faith, even if it questions your faith, encourage them to ask questions. See, we, we have the truth, and the truth can stand up to questions. If we had a lie, we don't want any questions. But we have the truth. God's word will stand up to any question. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then we started with pray and praying, in praying, because we need that. Hebrews 4.16, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Moms, your children were not an accident. They may not have come when you expected them, but I want to tell you what, they're not an accident. God intentionally placed them in your home and intentionally placed them with you. Jesus didn't, act, God didn't accidentally place his son, baby Jesus, in the home of Joseph and Mary. He didn't accidentally did that. He intentionally placed Jesus there. And I want to tell you, the children you have, God is intentionally placed with you for you to raise them, for you to teach them. May we be faithful to do that. I'm going to have the band go ahead and come on up. Each year, each year we, we have had flowers. We've had carnations for us to give to our parents and our, our mothers. The price of flowers have gone really, really high. So we're trying something new this year. Something we want to ask you to do is, is I'm going to ask you to come and get one of these. It's a little journal with a pen. And moms, here's what we want to ask you to do. You can, obviously, you can do anything you want with it. But, but here's what we want to ask you to do. Pray for your children. Write those prayers down. Maybe some of the dreams and the hopes that you have for them. Write them down. Date it. And then when that prayer is answered, write that down. And just see how many times God answers your prayer for your children. If you have a child, moms, if you have a child here, I'm going to ask you to come and line up here because they're going to have a hard time finding you out there. So if you would come and just stand right up here, then they're going to come right along and get this, and then you can take them to your seat. So moms, if your children are over here, if you would, come line up right here. If you all would, go ahead and start down here and go to your mom's. Then you can go to the seat. Find your mom.
Make my family your own. Come and fill every heart in my home. Jesus, fill every heart in my home. All right, if you are here and your mother is here, we're going to ask this outside section and that outside section to come up and get one of these and take it to your mother right now. And the back as well. Go ahead and come up. If your mother's here, come and get one of these and take them to your mother. Every heart 